Hey, welcome to the <laughs> to the bonus episode. I'm really terrible at openings. That's why Luke does them, as well, you can see. We we had so much time to prepare to, and that's how you come in. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> what got, come on down. I sound like I'm... Uh, you ever had uh, one of those things where the, the people guess your weight at like a fair or anything? You ever done that before? I've never... No, I've seen it. I've never done it before, though. Oh, yeah. I, I did it one time, and uh, uh, I know you can't uh, see what I look like, but um, I'm I'm actually much lighter than I than I appear. So when I did it, the guy was like, he was like the expert. He was like 30 pounds off. I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm the weight of a 14-year-old girl. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I, I, I won of, something. I thought of your introduction as, because you were we'd been talking for like several minutes before you started recording. We're, we're yeah. good to go. We, we start rolling. It's like you... <laughs> And I was, like, watching you walk across the podium to start the thing, and then you, like, fell, like, for no reason. Like, there was no no particular reason. You just, like, suddenly fell on your face. Well, it's because we've never done this before. You have to get nervous because we've never recorded these things before, you know? <laughs> I never do the opening. That's the problem. I have to do the opening. You always, you're like, hey, hey, <laughs> welcome to the time. Anyways, this is a bonus episode. This is serious stuff. Because people need more Forever Night, and we didn't give them enough Forever Night. We're giving them a little bonus Forever Night. I mean, you, you know? didn't get enough, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, God, I got enough. I got too much Forever Night. But other people like it, so because of them, I want to give them a little bit more because there's people who like it. Because apparently, you were saying, now, uh, no big secret, I don't pay attention to people uh, texting or whatever they do to you, but people <laughs> seem to like it. Social media, you call that texting. <laughs> I don't care. You are just the oldest man alive. <laughs> I am the oldest man alive. It's not my fault. But what I thought we would do is um, I was doing some research this week, and um, there is a scary amount of fan fiction on this show. Like, Luke, thousands, thousands of things. And some of these things are short. Some of them are long. Some of them are sexy. Some of them are dark. And and I started reading them, and I was reading them late at night, and then it was just, like, too much. And I, and I didn't know what to pull for this. But I thought we've done it before. We should read fan fiction and see what people kind of like about the show, what the relationships they pull from, or what plot lines they like, or, or what the aspects are they like of the show. So I have a bunch of stories, and you we can do a little bit longer one, or we could do a little bit shorter one. I can't. Now, I haven't read these. I've kind of skimmed and got the basic kind of, oh, this is a this, this length or whatever. So I'll give you a, a few titles. And you're gonna have to pick these, so this will at least be half be on you, half on me. If they're if they're really bad, all right. Um, I'm only picking one, right? Yeah, only pick one. Great. So we can either do a, lo- a longer one or a shorter one. You can pick. So here's the here's the title of the longer ones. Don't move. Second one, echoes after a night. Third one, with my hands tied. I guarantee you, that's like a BDSM one. <laughs> um, next, handcuffs do have their uses. No. <laughs> Next one, Brothers in Darkness. Those mm. are the long, longer ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, the, 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 the a little bit shorter ones, there's three. And one I know you're not going to pick, but it makes me laugh. That's why it's in there. Uh, first one, Of Night Dreams. Next one, Gone with the Blowjob. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and the third one is A Little Hanky Panky. So I think we know where a, a couple of those are going. Yeah, I think we have a good sense of where they're going. I are there they're not they don't do like taglines for these right there's not like one sentence summaries are there um well if you narrow them down I can see I can I can uh, click on them I and could, see here, here's 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 what I'm leaning I'm leaning toward brothers in darkness yep. or what was the first short one of night dreams yeah those were the two I'm leaning between okay let's see what we can have so brothers in darkness uh the summary is uncompleted sequel to an episode, I guess it's called Her Scent, His Heaven. Natalie immediately made a beeline for the cream si- cream, crime scene. Excuse me. But the Nick hung scene. back a little. The cream scene. Ooh, it's a different one. Uh, crime scene. But Nick hung back a little, sniffing at the air. Someone is leaving gift wrap severed heads for the families and acquaintances of the victims. Mm, That's Brothers so it's like a, It's like a sub story within an episode. I believe so. And the other one is of Night Dreams. And it says, Lucien Lacroix is in a reverie of his own. <laughs> so the brothers in darkness i'll just say they're not that much different one's about a thousand words and one's about 600 words interesting so you, i don't know if either of those are interesting to you 
Or we could uh, pick. Uh, do you want the blowjob one? <laughs> I, I do not. Um, <laughs> I am trying to pick one, and I have to hear you say the least erotic stuff. In so, um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I think I would like to hear. It sounds like Brothers in Darkness probably has more plot. Um, okay. And I'm. I think I'm most interested in that. I have a feeling. I mean, I'd like a full Lacroix one. But I have a feeling that one's going to be more a meditation on the character, which is fine. I just don't think I'm that excited about that right now. So let's let's do okay. that one. I want to hear where these severed heads are coming from. Okay. So Brothers in Darkness, and this is written by Melissa Treglia. And my apologies, Melissa, if that's not how you pronounce your name. Um, and it starts with um, a Bible verse. I don't know if this is accurate, but I'll read the verse as well. And it's uh, from John, First uh, John uh, 2, uh, verses 9 through 11, which says, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he, he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I haven't looked it up to see if that's the actual version. It seems like a King James version, um, but that's the uh, prelude to this. A good prelude. And as per always... Uh, as per usual, I should say, uh, if there's some stumbling, it's mostly the writing. It's not me. I can read. Let's just make that clear. I can read. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not making those assumptions. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. Nancy sighed in exhaustion as she got out of her car. Walking up the steps, she spotted a cardboard box addressed to her. Perhaps it, it was that book she had ordered through the book club and had awaited with high anticipation. She picked up the box, surprised that it felt a little heavy, and snatched the rest of her mail before entering her apartment. Eh, so far so good. Dropping her mail on the kitchen counter along with the package, she hit the play button on her answering machine, hoping that at least one would be from her boyfriend Jason. She took her he- she shook her head in disappointment as the messages were nothing more than the usual spate of bill collectors and advertisers. Hey, do you think Jason's a canon? I'm sorry? Do you think Jason is canon? Oh, you think that's uh, that's from the ser- from the episode? <laughs> yeah, I think these people are maybe from the episode, maybe. Maybe not. We don't know who Nancy is either, I guess. I, well, I'm assuming she's a new character and that Jason was someone who died in the, in the, in the episode. Mm, mm, yeah, you're probably right. She missed Jason terribly. They had not spoken in several days as the breakneck pace of his work schedule prevented him from calling her. Trying to take her mind off him for the time being, she began to rifle through her mail. Not satisfied with any of the things she received, she uh, turned to the cardboard box. She examined it for the sender's address but found nothing. Only her address was emblazoned upon it. Shrugging, she snatched a pair of scissors from her desk nearby to break the box's seal. When she finally opened the box, she gasped in horror. Inside was Jason's severed head, staring sightlessly at her. She heard a shrill, terrified scream, but didn't realize it was her own. Slamming her back against the kitchen counter in her haste to remove herself from the vicinity of the box, she sagged to the tile floor and began to sob. Oh, Jason, what sick mind could have done this to you? Bum, bum, bum. Good opening. Good cold open. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Okay, now we're getting into it. There's a little ellipses there. Natalie sighed beatifically in Nick's arms. Ooh, someone had a thesaurus. In Nick's arms as he kissed her with a tender passion. She felt safe ensconced in his embrace, and her ha- hands trailed along his bare back before tangling themselves in his blonde curls. He nibbled lightly at her throat before beginning to kiss his way down her body. Um, let me just mention real quick. Um, sometimes I go to the laundromat, and the laundromat has um, uh, books there, and I like uh, pulling out the erotic books and trying to find the funny sex scenes. And what's always fun is trying to toe that line between like being sexy and romantic, but not getting too graphic. Mm. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how they do on this. Um, where were we? Uh, You're nibbling think- down her body. Nibbling down her body, thank you. They shared a frustrated sigh when the bedside phone rang instinctively, or insistently, excuse me. Nick's eyes shot up to glare at the intrusive gadget and pondered, uh, ripping the cord out of the wall so they can continue their tryst undisturbed. So in this universe, they're they're doing it. Well, I mean, they an- you can't get erections, but they're kind of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> the answering machine clicked on downstairs, and they both groaned at the sound of Captain Reese's voice. Hey, Nick, I know it's your day off, but the Kingston Butcher has struck again. This time he's gone farther out of the neighborhood. I need you at 355 Dover Court Stat. Oh, and if you know where Dr. Lambert is, we're going to need her too. It's gotten messy. See you soon. The only sound after was a click as Reese hung up. I like the see you soon. 
That's nice. I like I like that we know it's in season three now because Captain Joe Reese is there, and I liked how that's true specific it was to places in Ontario and Toronto. <laughs> that's right. Give me that address Nick's again. Side. I'm gonna look it up while you talk. Uh, three five five Dover Court. Nick sighed. Looks like we'll have to continue this later, love. Is he British? He sat up, dropping an all too brief kiss on her cheek before darting into the walk in closet to change into a suitable outfit. Natalie rifled through the bureau and found one of her several outfits she had stowed here in the loft for just such an occasion. Since the two had become lovers, they had both gotten into the habit of leaving changes of clothing at each other's uh, places to avoid any unnecessary trips home or having to wear the same outfits ever again. Uh, over again. It was simply more efficient that way. That's I don't need to know any of that. Uh, it wasn't long before they were both fully clothed and running for the lift. Uh, when the lift got to ground level, they both rushed into their cars, Natalie pulling out the garage with Nick right behind her. After breaking nearly every traffic rule and a few laws of physics, they both got there <laughs> in record time. Love it. <laughs> Natalie immediately made a beeline for the crime scene, but Nick hung back a little, sniffing at the air. He loved sniffing at the air. He extended his senses and felt something oddly familiar about the vibrations in the area. He put the back of his hand to his mouth to conceal the fangs that were extending and swallow the back of the growl that was surfacing. Nick wandered around, looking at the outside area carefully while Natalie did her work. The scene reeked of the scent of decomposing corpse, but Nick knew instantly that the victim was not killed here, but there was no mistaking that the killer had dropped the remains here. Slowly, Nick's eyes were drawn to a large black garbage bag. It was the kind of heavy-duty trash bag one would expect to see in a kitchen, but it smelled wrong. Producing a Swiss army knife from his pocket, he carefully sliced open the bag. The decapitated corpse lay inside the bag haphazardly, Nick recoiled and bellowed for Natalie. <laughs> he bellowed for her, who was examining the gift-wrapped head inside. Natalie instantly ran out upon Nick's summons, and her eyes dropped down to the open bag. Well, now we know where the rest of them is, she remarked dryly. Zing, Nick I backed love away this. from I uh, I can't tell if that's in character for Natalie, because she's such a blah character. Nick backed away from the corpse a few steps, again placing his hand to his mouth. His eyes snapped with amber sparks. The beast within him was threatening to be released. Natalie noticed his behavior and leaned in close to him. Her eyes were alight with concerns for him. Nick, what's wrong? He has softly. It feels wrong, Natalie. I can't put my finger on it, but it all feels wrong. The volume of his voice dropped even lower, and he leaned forward to whisper in her ear, and it's driving the vampire crazy. Has he ever spoken like that before? No. S- res- no. Responding to, like, calling his... his vampire element of the vampire it's the a little dexter, definite article a little dexter-esque his a dark passenger mm. in this mm. she eyed him closely noting the sharp edges of his fangs were on display his eyes were beginning to change their hue he bowed his head and pursed his mouth shut drawing a few unneeded yet calming breaths to reassert his control over his vampiric nature natalie leaned down to take a closer look at the corpse her eyes were automatically drawn to the cut-off point at the neck. She found two small indentations that were obviously obscured by the cut. The lack of sufficient blood in the body cinched it for her. This was a vampire's killing. The end. This is good. This is better than the show. <laughs> this is not bad. I have to say, it's, you know, being really picky, it's it's the weird, like, thesaurus use of this. Like, everything is, I don't know, people are moving and, and looking in weird ways. Um, but other than that... It's not bad. I, I think that's in tone with the series. It's a little more. It's bigger. It's more verbose than it needs to be. That's the the, the grand opera scale of uh, Forever Night. Yeah. So I don't know. Good. Good job. Uh, good job, Melissa. You know, sometimes these are pretty funny, but this one's. I think this is pretty. Uh, pretty good in in tone. And the crime scene. It's just down from a uh, diner I ate breakfast at sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, 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 right. It's it's between it's between college and Dundas West. Oh, that's good. What a good area for beheading. It's honestly a beautiful Victorian house. Uh, you'd be lucky to live there. It's probably two million dollars. <laughs> and uh, that's that's a little story we call Brothers in Darkness. Pretty good. Uh, very good, very good. I would I would have liked to see where it was going. I want to know who the brother is. Yeah, I don't know. So do you want to do you want to hear Gone with the Blowjob? <laughs> Jesus, we'll do that. Uh, you can do that off air with me. Okay, fair enough. Um, also, that's not even a pun. Like, it's got to be gone with the wind. That's the pun. Well, I get wind, blow. I see where they're going. Yeah, okay. It's a stretch. Anyways. It's a stretch, Jordan. But, I mean, I think we I think we know they're not hoping to go too deep. This is not, like, the deepest literature you've ever read. 
<laughs> and that's how we uh, do a little bonus episode. You you wrap it up now. I opened it. Jordan, thank you for that fan fiction. I'm sure we all at home enjoyed it. I like that after five years, we're getting the hang of how to pick one of these, and, the, and that is to not just yeah. go in completely blindly. That has that has burnt us too many times, and I think this time we actually got a winner. Yeah, we didn't have to edit out the uh, racist content. <laughs> yeah. Didn't get too erotic. It didn't get too racist. Uh, we're happy yeah. with how it went. This was good. This was, uh, like I said, like the romances that are left in the laundromat. It's like just towing that line of like, just sexy enough. There's some nibbling, but there's not like, you don't, there's not like, it's not like jamming things, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I think you must have liked that it was a little more procedural. There's a little more of a crime going on. Mm Mm-hmm. I I honestly, let's talk to this lady. Let's see if she can reboot Forever Night. I think she might be the one. She's the one. She's the chosen one. (laughs) And that's it. All right. Well, listener, thanks for tuning in for this little bonus episode. And to Jordan, I don't know. I'll see you back on a regular one, I guess. All right. See you then.